But you said we talk about some jigs, guys. These are some cool tips that I think are gonna catch you more and bigger fish, especially this time of year in spring. What's going on guys? Welcome to Mighty Balls Fishing. Everybody say hi to my favorite fishing partner, Bog. If you guys don't have yourself a Bog to go fishing with, go break one out of jail. That's exactly where you got him and he is super cool. He's even cooler in person, I'll tell you that much. So today I'm gonna share with you two techniques that I'm using to, to catch fish. They're jig techniques. It's uh, these guys down here. And the reason that I wanna show them to you is I finally found two jigs that I absolutely love that I don't know if this is your experience, but I literally, if I go down like a 40 yard stretch of bank, I need to have like five rods tied up with jigs to have a jig to accommodate every sort of, I don't know, piece of cover, um, every single thing I need to fish, I guess you could say. But I finally found two jigs that, that sort of accommodate that. So what we're gonna do in this video, I'm gonna show you kind of some cool techniques how to rig these jigs up to get some more bites and a way to approach fishing in spring where you're gonna be actually catching pre-spawn, spawning, and post-spawn fish, all with a jig, which is a really fun way to fish. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Today, we're gonna to talk about the one-two punch with jig fishing. So I don't know if it's your experience, but when I'm going down and fishing the bank, and that is what you do in spring, you know, all these fish are getting up shallow, they're trying to spawn or they're moving out from spawning. It's really hard to have the right jig for every single situation you run into. So you're gonna have to have a couple jig rods tied up, but one way that I've really been catching a lot of fish is skipping docks, getting further back than anybody else, as well as pitching cover around areas where those fish might move into spawn. We're actually kind of near some of that stuff now. I'll show you for a second. You got a bunch of wood right here. There's a dock right around the corner, like over there. We're in a pocket. There's some rocks, there's some piles. So, you know, those are the kinds of things these fish are gonna use to sort of move in, move out, as well as spawn. And those are the fish that, that we're gonna wanna catch because there's gonna be numbers and there's gonna be bigs mixed in. And then there's gonna be those aggressive post spawners. So the first thing I wanna go through is kind of tell you about my personal struggle. So when I moved up to Alabama, I really struggled to find a jig that, that suited my needs. You guys know I love to flip and pitch, so I wanted something that had a stout hook, but also had, you gotta have kind of the right head to get through wood, rock, as well as not get hung up on these docks. And I struggled to, to find a jig because they would either be the right jig with too thin of a hook, or they'd be the wrong jig and the hook would be super stout and I'd hang up all the time. So what I found is this. The other thing too is, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I really believe in fishing smaller presentations, especially on these high, highly pressured lakes. In Florida, go big or go home for the most part. But up here in Alabama, there's so much pressure and these fish get so weird during that sort of, I don't know, like that spawning kind of staging sort of period that I think downsizing really gets you more bites and really can unlock some bigger fish because those fish kind of get trained to seeing the same thing. So the two jigs that, that I want to show you are these guys right here. They're both Nichols jigs. One is the Drew Benton, I believe it's called the Finesse Flipping Jig, and the other is the D. Thomas Flipping Jig. So there's one aspect that these both these jigs have in common. These are both finesse jigs. They are smaller, more compact designs. Um, they both come, I only have them in half and three eighths. I don't know if they come bigger than that. All you really need personally, in my opinion, is a half and three eighths. But let's break down what I'm using each for, and then I'm gonna show you kind of how to rig them up and what setups, and talk a little bit about the technique and how I'm catching fish with them. So the first one let's go through is this, um, this Drew Benton. I'm gonna show you the head right off the bat. You can see the head's a sort of modified archy. It has a horizontal line tie, and then let me show you this guy. I don't know if you guys can tell in the video, but that is one stout, stout bleep hook. You know what I'm trying to say. But what I'm doing with this guy mainly, I am using it to flip, but more so, do you see how this the jig kind of has that flatter kind of belly to it, as well as that horizontal line tie? This jig is the awesomest skipping jig. Plus, it has a super stout hook. 
and the brush guard it is pretty darn stout. What I'm doing with this, guys, I'm skipping way back under docks, like way, way back, where people don't belong fishing kind of way back. I'm also skipping, like, if there'll be a tree fall or some kind of, like, covered, like, dangling into the water, and it has, like, a an opening in the back of it, I'll skip this thing back there. This head really provides for a perfect, like, skipping surface. I can get it way back in there, and then with that hook, I'm not super worried about, you know, hooking a big fish and getting them out and opening up the hook. One thing that does suck though is if you do hang this jig, odds are you're gonna be breaking it off because you're not gonna open up this hook and bend it back. The other cool thing that both these jigs incorporate is it's a toothpick keeper system. If you guys can see, it's gonna be a little hard to see. There's a small hole in that keeper. Basically, you slide your plastic up and pop that toothpick through. Now, in, in the situations that, that I'm actually using it right now, I'm not using that keeper system because I'm using pretty small trailers, which I'm going to show you and talk about. I have tons of stuff, but I'll show you kind of which trailers I'm using for which techniques. But later in the spring, when you're using some bigger baits and those fish kind of get focused on a little bit bigger forage, you can use that keeper system, put a big old chunk or something on there, and then basically tack it on there so it doesn't go anywhere. So this is the Drew Benton. I'm using it in the 3 8 and let's talk about the setup that I'm throwing it on. Let me grab this thing here real quick. This is a seven foot medium heavy. It's a Halo TI. I got it on, I believe this is the Daiwa. It's like the XS Elite or something like that. It's the one for like, I'll put links to all this stuff at Tackle Warehouse down in the description box, but it's the one for 249 at Tackle Warehouse. It's an eight to one reel. So it's, it's a pretty, fast reel i got 15 pound fluorocarbon on there the reason i'm running a seven foot is i want to be able to kind of maneuver around like little i don't know what you call it like corners and stuff so i'll make like roll casts around the like the inside corner of a dock um i also want to be able to make a nice easy roll cast to get under a dock i basically want to be very uh, meticulous. I want to be, be able to present the bait exactly where I want in close quarters and that's when you go to a little shorter rod. Short is relative though. I'm like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so for me like anything 6'6 six, six to like 7 is what I consider a slightly shorter rod. If you're a little shorter than me go to for like a 6'10". If you're a little taller you might want to look at like a 7'1", seven, 7'2". Seven, but medium heavy is the way to go. You don't want a super heavy duty rod. Here's the other kind of little tip that I'll give you. A lot of guys skip with super heavy line. They'll use like 20 pound, you know, 25 pound, like fluorocarbon. I recommend you don't. Uh, it, it can be a little sketchy when you hook the fish, especially when they're way back in there. But the 15 pound, 15 to 17 is really what I find is the best. It's supple enough so that you're able to skip the bait a lot more accurately. You also don't backlash nearly as bad. I'll tell you another thing too, to be perfectly frank, if you're not backlashing, you're not doing it right. So if you try to do this, this dock skipping technique and this heavy cover skipping technique, don't get frustrated if you backlash. Literally everybody does. I don't care who you are. You can be Kevin Van Dam, dude. You're gonna backlash when you do this. And if you're backlashing, it means you're trying to put the bait far enough back in that piece of cover, whether it's a dock or a tree or something like that. It's a good sign, but it's friggin' annoying. But the reason to use that lighter line is it's a little more supple and it makes it a lot easier to skip the bait and present it and sort of do it in a fluid manner. Oftentimes when you're using some of that heavier line, you'll get over, sort of over reel. Um, it'll, it'll catch on itself. It's, it's annoying. It's definitely more comfortable when you hook a big fish, but for efficiency and functionality, really recommend, don't go any lower than 15, but like 15 to 17 is what you want to go to and definitely have a high speed reel. So the other thing that I want to tell you about that I'm doing with this. So we're skipping these docks. We're focusing on maybe the back two thirds of a pocket. More isolated docks are usually better, but I will skip this thing in, get it as far back as I can, and I'll sit there and just kind of let it feel. Usually most of your bites are gonna come on that initial drop. You skip it back in there, you lift, you're gonna get weight, and it's gonna be a good one. The other thing that you can do though, and if you guys watched the live stream I was on with Alex Rudd is, once you get that initial skip in there, you're feeling for them, nothing there, go ahead and reel the bait out like a swim jig. What's kind of cool about this guy is you can reel it 
and it does kind of a nice little shimmy and basically you swim jig the bait out to see if there's any more suspended fish or anything like that one of the interesting things that i saw today is there's a lot of brim that aren't so much on the bottom but they're suspended around some of the dock pilings over like six to eight feet so i'll skip that jig into two three feet of water way in the back and then i'll reel it out and sort of suspend it along there and get some bites in that in that regard or in that manner it's just a way to a good way to double your i guess i don't know get more out of your effort you know you're doubling your chances to get a fish because you're doing that initial kind of flipping reaction bite skip way back in there and then you're reeling and swimming it out the other cool thing that can happen too is it can alert you to a good dock and how's that well basically you'll you might have i had a bunch of spots like follow me out i had one bass follow me out i had some brim follow me out it'll tell you which docks are holding forage which docks have fish um it's just kind of a cool little thing if you keep your eyes on the ball like you can pick up a lot more information from a cast even if you're not getting a bite so the Drew Benton is kind of my my little skipping deal that is a sweet jig stout hook it's got a perfect head for skipping let's talk about the other jig that I found once again it is a compact jig this is the D Thomas the other thing that I'm gonna do let me grab the one I actually have tied up because that one I already modified so I do a little mod to both of these jigs and they're already pretty compact but I actually trim the skirt down um, and, and make it even shorter. Usually the, the going rule is you trim it down to the base of the hook, which is exactly what I did there, if you guys look really close. So this is the D. Thomas. If you guys know any like bass fishing history, D. Thomas is a ultimate flipping guru and god. He basically invented it, like true flipping, like pull on your line flipping. Um, so once again, this has a pretty stout brush guard, you can see super stout hook which is awesome um a little different hook or a little different head it has more of sort of your your darter style head the cool part about both these jigs though is they run super clean through wood rock as well as dock pilings or any kind of like tangly sort of if you got rebar and stuff down there they are i like honestly i've struggled to find a jig that that runs through things clean these two like you'll hang some and lose some don't get me wrong any jig you're going to do that these just run super clean because one of the biggest things about jig fishing when you're target fishing like this is being efficient and getting in a rhythm um, whether it's flipping, whether you're skipping. Because if you get in that rhythm, all of a sudden you start getting bites and things start to happen. At least that's the way it works for me. But it runs super clean. It's a little more of a, a bellied hook. This one does skip as well. Not as, not as good, to be perfectly honest. This has the perpendicular line tie just like that. And what I'm doing with this guy, I have this set up on a 7.2 um, heavy KS2. Um, I have 18 pound fluorocarbon that's Sunline, and then this is a 721 reel. If I had a bunch of loot and Tacuaras had a bunch of Corrados, I would probably buy an 821, a little faster one, but I'm trying to save my loot. So, actually, I'm trying to save for a boat. Yeah, little teaser there. We'll see if that happens, but. But what I'm doing with this guy, this is my flipping setup. So if I get around any kind of wood or if I get tight quarters to a dock where I want to flip like a, a specific piling or something like that, or if there's a little point or a bluff sticking out and I want to flip to that, that's where I'm using this guy. And I can catch them spawning kind of on a reaction. I can catch them on the fall. I can catch shad spawn fish sometimes when they're kind of like tucked up in those trees in the shady spots. It's, it's a good way to sort of fill the gap, so I'll skip my way through most of this stuff, and then I'll get on some of these in-between areas that have either some steeper bank or something like that, and I'll flip, or I'll pitch that, that jig to the bank. And it doesn't mean there even has to be cover on it. A lot of these places, there's just rock and sort of like a tapered or a fall-off bank. I'll actually pitch this jig to that. Bluff wells are a great example. Bluff wells will have like a little step on them, and I'll actually pitch it as when I'm going from dock to dock, I'll pitch it to that bluff wall, I'll let it kind of settle down and fall down, and then I'll feel for that little step and pop it off. And once I don't get a bite, or if I get a bite, great. If I don't get a bite, I'll just move on and keep on going every like five feet or so. But that's kind of my like one-two punch. It's a great way to, to catch a lot of fish, and I like it because 
you can be really meticulous and pick things apart, and I think that's what you need to do in spring. Um, it fits my style of fishing, kind of plunking away. It's somewhat like kind of Ned Rig fishing. You know, you skip the jig, you pitch this jig, you know, you see a piece of wood, you skip in there, you skip to the edge of it, the tip of it, you pitch deeper into it. It gives you a lot of versatility to sort of approach everything that you see on the bank and around the bank and do it with two rods, two rigs, and sort of get in, like we kind of talked about, getting that rhythm. So let's talk about trailers. This one's already rigged up, so we'll, we'll tap on this. You can't go wrong, this is a Gambler Flappy Daddy. Um, I have it cut down, you'll see I cut it down to be sort of like a, a chunk. Basically it's you know your paddle tail kind of deal. The reason I like this on my flipping jig is it does this little kicking deal when it's falling and when I reel it out. Because just like the, the skipping jig, I'll reel this thing kind of slower out of the wood or the cover that I'm in to sort of swim it out to see if I get, can get some more bites there. It also provides a little bulk too. You can see the body's a little bit thicker. But this is kind of a, I don't know, it's your classic sort of little like paddle tail craw. Let's dig in some uh, some other stuff and see what we got the other one that i've been using that i really like is this guy so it's a little otter once again you'll notice these are compact trailers that i'm using i'm trying to keep that jig pretty gosh darn small but let me show you the mod that i'm actually doing with the the otter so this is what i'm mainly using on the skipping presentation and there's a couple reasons one I like a flat creature style bait on those skipping presentations. I'm basically adding more sort of flat belly or like plain to that Arky style head. So when I get that thing, let me get one out. When I got this, this, um, this Drew Benton jig, when I add that, that flat body, this isn't gonna represent it very well. Let me just rig it up for you. So let me show you the mod. Basically, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip the legs off. Why do I do that? Because if I'm skipping, I want as little resistance as that bait is going back because it'll give me less backlashes and it'll make it easier to skip. The other thing I'm going to do is bite the tip off, just like that. And then I'm going to thread this joker on, just like this. And I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I got this thing rigged up. This one isn't cut down, so it's a little bulkier. But you can see on this end, see how flat it is coming from the head straight down to that, that body right there? What it does is it gives me this flatter plane. If you guys ever go and skip rocks or anything, the rocks you want to look for are the ones that have the, the smooth, longer sides, right? Because they'll skip forever. So basically, I'm creating sort of a skipping rock, but it's skipping jig. The other reason that I like the, um, the otter is it has this kind of flat tail. And in other videos, I've told you how you can cut that tail to make it a little swimming tail. In this situation, I want to leave it as is because as it falls, so I'll skip that thing in there and basically let it fall on a free uh, open spool, or not open spool, but on a slack line. This thing will just kind of, ooh, almost like a tube. It just kind of does this little waving action on the way down. And I like that. I think it's different than things that they've seen. It's a little different. It has some movement, but it's also sort of, I don't know, you'd call it maybe like glide oriented. These are actually the colors that I like too. This is Hurricane Craw. It's a chartreuse uh, pumpkin blend. Can't go wrong with the green pumpkin. And then the other color that I've been using a bunch of is Okeechobee Craw or green pumpkin blue with some, some blue flake in it. Just kind of colors that, that mimic the natural, but maybe I'll go to that hurricane crawl or add that blue when the water has just a little bit of stain or a little bit of color to it. So if you guys are like me and you like to fish heavy cover, fish meticulously and like detail oriented, and I will tell you there's nothing like getting a bite 25 feet back under a dock. It is friggin' awesome, especially when it's a four pounder. But grab yourself some jakes. I'll put links to all this stuff at Tackle Warehouse um, down in the description box. Try this technique. Like I said, if you like flipping, if you like heavy cover, it's a great way to do it in spring. The rewards can be pretty good. And you're also catching fish that are going in, coming out, as well as spawning. It kind of puts you in a very high percentage area. The other thing too is, you know, these lakes get a lot of pressure. I'm sure your lake gets a lot of pressure. Everybody wants to get out and fish. Spring is one of the best times of the year to do it. So putting your bait in places, in all frankness, it doesn't really, they don't really belong. It, is really key to getting some of those bigger bites or at least even getting consistent bites. Um, you gotta tap in because those easy fish, those fish on the edge of the dock, on the corner, you know, on the tip of the tree, outside the tree that are gonna eat a moving bait and stuff, sometimes those fish, 
are just not chewing and you got to go deeper you got to get thicker and you got to take some risks and put your bait you know in places you might not get it back but it can pay off so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like and subscribe button i just try to share my perspective make sure to support the kind of fishing or outdoor content that you enjoy it doesn't have to be me it can be anybody but i have noticed like youtube definitely has been throttling down on like you know tactical bass and um, some of the instructive like bass fishing and outdoor sort of channels so if you guys like this kind of content if you think it's valuable and you take stuff away from it make sure you support it because youtube's not going to they're not going to go out of their way but you guys can sort of pick out the things that you want to see the things that you think that has value so definitely hit that like button if you liked it and if you don't hit that dislike button i like that too haha -ha. what, what up now but we'll see you next time back out on the water i'm gonna throw this dog in the water i think because he is getting so hot make sure to uh say hi to bog everybody we'll see you next time now i'm gonna get back to fishing see if i can't flip up or skip up another bass <laughs>